Good morning, everyone. Here we are in uh, sunny, and I must say it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And uh, here we are in, um, I'll say Toronto, because that's where you your frame of reference would be. I'm actually in a bedroom community outside of Toronto, part of what we call the GTA, the Greater Toronto Area. Um, with us today is our guest, Mary Sloan. And before I introduce her, let's not say that this is just fun and no education. So here we go. Let me share my screen if I can. And um, let me see Chrome tab and Google Maps. And here we are. So what you're looking at is uh, the West Coast of Canada. And what we have is Vancouver. Vancouver Island, and this is the state of Washington. Now, what I, why we're here is to help you understand where Mary is. If we zoom in, and this is Vancouver and Richmond and all that parts of, of Canada, and this is the international date line, or sorry, the international border, you'll see there's a little place here called Point Roberts. And Point Roberts, although it's attached to Canada, is actually part of Washington State. And that's where Mary is today. So she's been living there for quite a few years. And uh, the only way to get to Point Roberts is either to drive around, go through Suwasan, or to go by boat. I understand that there is no, sh no ferry. Um, there is no ferry and um, something else that I learned uh, while I was looking at it um, is that the Canada-US border is the absolute longest border between two countries in the world so there you go Trump <laughs> build us all we're going to build a hedge because you know we're Canadian Anyway, today our guest is Mary Sloan, and uh, she's waiting in the green room. Let's go get her. There you are. Mary's there. Hey, Mary. How are you today? Good morning. I'm excellent, and it's a fantastic day here in Point Roberts. Um, beautiful, sunny, warm. So you were you were born and raised in, in uh, Alberta. Uh, started off in Edmonton, educated in Calgary. Now, how did you get to Point Roberts? That's a stretch. <laughs> well, it's um. You drove. <laughs> I definitely drove. I didn't swim. <laughs> um, I guess my husband and I met. Um, I was going to university in Washington, and um, we met and got married, lived in the Seattle area. He worked for a big U.S. insurance company and got asked to come to Canada and um, run operations for Aetna, um, a rather large company. Uh -huh. And um, so, first of all, it was just the Vancouver office. And then it became all of Western Canada and Aetna set up an entire Canadian operation. So we spent most of our life um, in Canada, living um, out and about the greater Vancouver area. We had a hobby farm. I had horses. I show jumped. Um, oh, cool. And uh, so um, we lived out in Langley. And now we're having the. the sorry. Odd lag. I'm gone. <laughs> Bear with us. <laughs> Facebook, what can we say? Mary, what about your family? You, you're married. Do you have children, grandchildren, anything like that? I have two children. I have two sons, uh, both of whom live in the Richmond area, which is where we ended up living for quite some time. And um, they are both adults. One of them has two children, so I have two grandchildren. And they live in Suwasan. So Point Roberts was really oh. um, nice and convenient. And it's a great area. 
Um, it's very beautiful and treed and it's got hills and it's got beach and it's got, you know, sort of a little bit of everything in a very small space. There's about 900 permanent residents in Point Roberts. Um, yeah. I've <laughs> been there by vessel. We were in a, we, we, we we were are, you're buried in Canadians. So, so the populace is, you know, a couple of thousand of Canadians that come on weekends and a few Americans that stay all the time. Um, Excellent. And um, uh, that's it. <laughs> Mary, what's what? the what's your favorite room in the house? Everybody has a favorite room. What's my favorite room? An um, off the wall. Let's change the subject topic. <laughs> How's that, eh? What's your favorite probably, room in the house? It's probably the kitchen because I love cooking, and uh, so I enjoy going to the kitchen and seeing what comes out. <laughs> what's uh, What's one of your favorite comfort dishes to make? Oh, it would be a pasta. But, of course, I've gone keto, so it's chickpea pasta. And, uh, oh, usually with, uh, you know, lots of great uh, super lean ground beef and uh, um, pesto and cheese and all kinds of fun things. How's keto working for you? I that's something that I've tried several times. It's certainly big, um, and and when I stick to it, it works for me, and I'm very happy on it. How are you doing with it? Yeah, about the same. I yeah. I mean I I love bread. <laughs> okay, bread is an addiction, oh. and I just avoid it like a plague. You know, I it's like no, don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> I kept trying to find some ice cream on keto. <laughs> um, That's not too hard, actually. Uh, well, things are certainly changing, uh, you know, in the, the frozen food industry. Yeah. Um, what are two things on your bucket list that you want to make sure you do? Well, I'm an inveterate traveler. Um, we have traveled extensively. I live for eight years in uh, Central America, traveled extensively. Um, and we love to do small cruises. Um, we've done some of the big ones, but we're not that attached to cruising on, on a big ship um, where it's very impersonal. We like little ships. So we did the Galapagos. We've done um, the uh, Haida Gwaii um, on, you know, ships that are are uh, you know 14 people um and it's wonderful because it's very much like family you have a cook who makes all your meals and uh, you just have a great time and uh, you know they are such special events because you see things that are so off the beaten path um you know and you learn such interesting things so um i want to do um we were in Greece and did a cruise, which was fantastic. We cruised the islands. So what a great way to see Greece and all the islands because there's a ton of them. So you wake up in the morning at a, at a new destination and you'd spend the morning out touring and wandering around and seeing a beautiful island and you'd jump on the boat about one and it would take you to another destination about four and you'd jump off the boat and you'd go um poke about and have a good time and if you chose you could eat out or you can go back to the boat and eat whatever you whatever you wonderful want. and um we learned about a cruise that does something similar um and about the same size it wasn't really tiny but it wasn't really big it was about 600 people so uh -huh. it was pretty comfortable and you could get to know people and um it takes you from greece all the way around the um, shore of Europe and um, up and uh, into a, not sure the river, but like down as far as St. Petersburg um, and through um, the rivers of, of Europe as well. So that to me is really interesting. So that's on 
our bucket list. <laughs> and, That's um, it. Yeah. And I guess Thailand, I haven't, it's strange, but I haven't been to Thailand. We were in mm. Australia and gave our son money to go to Thailand so he could meet his girlfriend. And we didn't go dumb. <laughs> dumb <off. laughs> but Okay, now that was it. <laughs> My husband had a job at the time that he had to come back home to. So, <laughs> ah, well intended, but too bad you didn't get there. <laughs> Um, is there any place that you went to in your travels uh, that you could have skipped? There's lots we'd like to go back to, but sometimes there's one that was, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Another, I wouldn't recommend that one. I don't know. I, I mean, it's all about experience, right? And True. so for me, there's no place I wouldn't want to have seen um they've all been great interesting you know it's just different it's not nothing's bad it's just different exactly yeah i get you <laughs> um, i mean i'll tell you where i don't like to go oh, okay <laughs> i Good. don't like to go to mexico because i invariably get montezuma's revenge and i have been to mexico Oh, a dozen times, and every time I, well, I think I didn't get sick once. Awful. Oh. Mm -hmm. I, I, um, I mean, they do have uh, medications out right now, but I didn't take it because it only lasts for three months. And then you can't take it again. Uh, and I forget what the name of the, med the medication is right now, but there is something available. And um, I... I spent a w my winters there and uh, I didn't get Montezuma's revenge, but I got dengue fever and I would take Montezuma's revenge any day. Oh my God. You can't <laughs> dengue fever. I mean, it's with you forever. Yeah. I got a few things that are forever. <laughs> Thanks to some well, we, we, we took something against dengue fever before we ever traveled much, but um, cause that, that's not a good one. But uh no, I don't like I don't like Montezuma's Revenge at all. <laughs> no. no, and it, it can just ruin your vacation, and that's just not good. Um, but culturally, uh, Mexico was okay for you, was it? Yeah, it was interesting. Um, you know, we didn't spend much time in Mexico City, and it was we were always out, kind of in the touristy area. So I can't say that I really had a sense of the real Mexico, no. but um, no, it was, you know, you, pleasant, pleasant. you mentioned South America, Central America. We, um, was there another place beside, well, I don't, Mexico isn't really, oh, I guess it is Central America. Was there another place in Central America that you had been to that, uh, you wanted to share with us or any other place that you, that really sticks out in your mind? It's like, wow, if you ever get the chance and there's only one trip you can take, you got to go here. <laughs> um, well, what was a real excitement for me was the tip of South America when we went to Australia um, mm -hmm. in better at wine drinker. Um, and so to go through their wine country was fantastic. Um, and they actually have the highest mountain um, in all of the Americas. Um, so we got to see that. Um, it's right on the border of um, Australia. Uh, Sorry, Argentina and Chile. Aconcagua. Mm -hmm. My husband climbed Aconcagua. I was at base camp. So at that part. Oh, really? I know well. yeah. 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 And yeah. Um, killer. <laughs> and then, of course, the Montaña de Siete Colores was just amazing. It was so beautiful. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I spent lots of time there. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Um, what's the best thing? This is a real off the wall question. What's the best thing about being in at this age in your life, this part of your life? Being alive? <laughs> I mean, a lot Ooh. of people died. <laughs> but, you know, I have a joie de vivre. Not I'm still totally alive. I'm interested every day. I get up excited because I have something 
new to learn, new to do, something different, something I can contribute. Um, and as you know, I happen to love messenger chatbots um, because I think that they are such a distinct advantage for businesses to be able to, you know, we are looking to have conversations with people mm -hmm. all the time and you can only have so many conversations, but the messenger chatbots allow you to have many, many, many one-on-one -on -one conversations. As you were traveling, Mary, Mary, as you were traveling, um, did you, did you have that great sense of, oh my God, I'm so lucky to be traveling in this century because we've got the internet. We can keep in touch with people. I can oh, find out true. more as I go. It's just an amazing time to be uh, alive. I mean, when I went to China um, and I thought, I thought for, for the first time when I went there, uh, I was there for five years and I thought I couldn't have done this comfortably if there wasn't for internet. Right. So right. it's uh, yeah. it's really given us a lot of advantages. As you were traveling, was there anything in particular about communication that um, really helped you with the internet? Skype. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. I mean, Skype was great because I could chat with the family anytime I wanted. Really, anytime. Forgot all about that. I, I was busy uh, emailing at the time. I get. I think Skype was a little couple years into China, and uh, it took people a little bit to warm up to it. You know, oh, oh they're yeah. going to be on camera. You know, that whole fear thing. Um, so yeah, it's funny how you um, people hate to to be on camera, and yet don't you have face to face conversations? I mean, like really. <laughs> But not everybody's watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it's something that I'm hoping to uh, to do a bit more on to to get some more people out um, having the experience and getting more used to it. Because if you, you, I think you'll agree, it's a it's something that we're going to have to get used to. That's all there is to it, in order to promote your business. Oh, absolutely. To, yeah, to move forward. Um, yeah, absolutely. Where was your last vacation? And how long ago was it? Where did you go? How long ago was it? And then we'll get off vacation. Well, my <laughs> my a vacation and I today. Have started taking mini vacations, right? We call them mini vacations just because um, we're so into the vacation thing. So we went um, into Canada yesterday. And went up to um, the White Rock um, right. area, and you know, wandered the pier, went out for lunch, had a good time, and it was a mini vacation. Right, and we and sometimes, you know, I I lived in Toronto by Casa Loma, which is a, a landmark in Toronto. Uh, I lived there for I don't know two and a half, three years. Never went to see it. And everybody goes, oh, Casa Loma, you were right before that. We don't go and usually see the local things unless someone comes to visit us and then we go, oh, yeah, 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 let's go. <laughs> well, we said that often. And, of course, living next to Vancouver, which is already an absolutely beautiful mm -hmm. city that everybody else comes to visit. So we have done extensive traveling around Vancouver. We, we try to get out once a week on a mini vacation, right? Yeah, I used to live in the West End in uh, uh, by Stanley Park, uh, right across on Burrard Inlet. And uh, um, every once, for someone who grew up in rural Ontario with seventy-seven people, um, to suddenly be living on Beach Avenue in in the West End in a very tourist area, it was kind of a pinch me now and again situation. I took the uh, aquabus to work at the Maritime Museum uh, across oh, wow. the, the water. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and what a lovely, relaxing way to come home at the end of the day with your little echo bus and the decks. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's great. Home. Yeah, living the dream, living the dream, that's for sure. So how did you go from, uh, from your life before, your Etna uh, things, um, 
to the internet and uh, uh, internet marketing and all of that. What to, how did that transition occur? Well, I did network marketing for a long time. Um, you know, it was great to do with a family because you could be with a family when you needed to be with a family. And um, yet, you know, I had my independence and I had a ton of friends and traveled around and did a lot of fun things and, and loved it. And um, then when we said we were retired and headed out, um, I, of course, didn't do that anymore. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, we got to meet a lot of new people. We lived in a community in um, the country of Panama. Um, there's a city in Florida called Panama also, but Panama it, City Beach, I was there. <laughs> this was in the country of Panama where yes. the canal is. Um, you know, and I mean, that's quite an event. There's a restaurant right on the edge of the canal and uh, to sit in this restaurant while these huge, huge monster ships go past, you know, like it's quite amazing. Anyway, um, that would be. so, so um, I mean, we were there and then I have a, a son who has uh, bipolar disease and I was coming home. Uh, back to to Canada a lot um, to take care of him when he was hospitalized and thing. It was not it's right. not a nice disease at all. Mm -hmm. And um, so finally we went. No, nah, this isn't working. We we better go back closer to him. And then the grandkids showed up. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that was my transition into. The internet, because um, all of a sudden I came back to no network, right? Because I'd been out of the country for eight years um, and didn't really, you know, I mean, it was, I lost touch with a lot, 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 lot of people, right? It and happens. I just know, eight eight years, <laughs> you know, eight years and you're gone. So, yeah. um, I mean, but I came back to a whole new world of internet, which I found fascinating and have just spent time learning and enjoying. Mary, as oh, I was oh, saying to you yesterday when we had uh, uh, a few minutes to chat, uh, I am in awe of people like you who aren't 22 anymore and oh, you no, no. Had to wrap your head around such a thing as messenger bots that to me uh because it just goes beyond completely beyond me i'm not that technical and uh so i am in awe of your skill and the fact that you uh you do so well in this and you really wrapped your head around it you're living it <laughs> wow. you're the queen messenger bot <laughs> i think i'm just a chatty person and so as a chatty person it say like it made logical sense to me that one would take and create a conversation that um, you know you can create a little person <clears throat> that has a conversation for you and you can have many of them going on at the same time. I thought that was a fantastic idea. Uh, <clears throat> I understand where you come from. I I went from being chatty to text video. Uh, you know, um, writing down the conversations and everything as part of a, an advertisement for a text video uh, because that was less technical. When you're writing a conversation, though, you've only got the one side of it. So do you, how do you how do you work with that? Because the bot is only the the the, the answer. The question comes from from elsewhere, right? Um, actually, it's usually the reverse. Um, oh. And you can. <laughs> Show you what I know, Mary. <laughs> and you can teach, um, you know, it's like you can put up a whole page of frequently asked questions, right? But right. people find them very hard to go through. Uh -huh. And you can give them to your messenger chat bot. You can break them up into one question at a time. You can give them keywords so that the messenger chat bot knows what kind of question you're asking. And we'll put to you, is this is this your question or, or what is your question? And as long as it's close, the messenger chatbot can give them 
an answer to the frequently asked question. And so, um, you know, by using keywords, you can get a lot of information about, um, about the type of things that you might want to ask. You know, Gary um, V, Gary Vaynerchuk, has um, a lot of people want to ask him a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. And so he's set up really an interesting um, chat bot. But he tells people, you can ask me questions in these areas and my messenger chat bot will respond. Um, because you have to direct it a little bit. This is okay. pre set conversations, you know, and, um, what you can do with the messenger chat bot, of course, um, and you can do what they're used a lot for actually is they are used a lot for, um, service calls and for doing, um, customer service yes. because a lot of the customer service questions are repetitious, right? Mm -hmm. So the, you know, messenger chatbot can definitely be given the right answers and feed them out to people. But then there may be things that come up frequently that have need a human touch and the messenger chatbot can reach out and say, ah, somebody real person, please. <laughs> and they can step in and um, take over the conversation. Excellent. Now I have one very serious question, and that is: for Gary V's chat uh, chat box, do they swear like he does? <laughs> <laughs> or is that like a kind of version of Gary V? Well, I don't. I, I don't know. I haven't spent a whole ton of time going through it. I just took a look <laughs> at how, he'd, how he'd organized it. But um, I'm, I'm not sure. sure. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm sure that there's a lot of swearing going on because Gary would have taken clips. A video yeah, in, certainly in, in his <laughs> and added them to his chat box. Yeah, so I would there you go. <laughs> Besides, who would Gary V be so without a foul mouth, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess that's part of his cachet. Uh, I don't know that it would work for anybody else, but he, you know, that's it. It's you. You own it. You you go with it. You get your following, and that's well, that's um, what he says. He so says. Viral. I mean, he says. He would like to be able to give it up because it turns people off, but it is who he is. And so he goes with it. I know they have a lot of chats with him about it. Um, so what is some, if, what would I do with um, a messenger bot? What could it, what can it do for me? Well, it depends on what you'd like it to do. Um, for example, um, I have set up a demo bot for a restaurant to show them how they might use a chatbot to introduce people to the restaurant, to introduce people to the, um, the chef, to the um, people that are working in the kitchen, to the owner, oh. to the manager. And, um, you know, oh, these are the things. Then. Should we have a look at that then? That sounds like a good idea. Sure. Well, let me yeah. share my screen and I will... Take her grab, grab my link. This is cool. It's going to be a real education for me. <laughs> I, I'm aware of, uh, of uh, messenger bots, uh, but it goes beyond me. I'm too old school, I guess. All right. I do well to, to, I do well to uh, figure out um, what are we using here? Stockyard. Yeah. Why isn't sharing working here? Oh, wait a minute. Um, oh. No, I stopped sharing, so. Oh, just a sec. You, I got it. I got it. I got it. You got it? Okay. Yeah, I just need to choose a tab. So I'll choose the Chamber Influencers just to bring it up. Mm -hmm. There you go. You Can you see my screen now? Uh, there, add to stream. There we go. Okay, great. So um, in order to show you how my um, messenger chat bot for restaurant works, I have taken what is called an MME link. Now that just means, you know, messenger link. And I've labeled it demo. Um, and 
So, of course, I'm going to copy that and I'm going to open a new tab and I'm going to paste it. Now that opens into Messenger. And of course, I've got Facebook chiming in the background because I've got, oops, oh. Now, this is a former chat on just a sec here. I must have grabbed the wrong one. No worries. Uh, I thought I grabbed the demo that says. We have a question from Rick Scherer, and he'd like to know which platform you're working with. ManyChat. ManyChat, okay. Thanks for the question, Rick. Um, everybody, if you log in to StreamYard, we'll be able to see who makes the comment um a, a facebook user good morning they haven't logged in yet so uh do log in so we can uh, give credit where credit is due not screen um rick says we're not seeing your screen only the local chamber influencers but that's a screen you wanted right Oh, I, I, yeah, okay. I have to go back and I have to sh reshare. It doesn't change when I change tabs. No, I wanted my messenger. Oh, yeah, I think you have to reshare every time you change it. Thanks, Rick. Uh, okay. Uh, now I have to figure out how to get back. <laughs> All right, let's do this resharing thing. Um, All right. Um. Will it share? Are you having problems getting it to share? No. It's sharing. I just have to choose. Ah. Okay. Now it has my. Oh, it, gone, it went to a different messenger. That's interesting. Okay, well, let's do this this way. Okay, so we're in your messenger box. I'm in messenger, my okay. messenger application, and I've just um, started the messenger bot for the restaurant demo. Ah, okay. We're, we're right. seeing it now. Good. So, as you can see, I've created a little butler for my um, restaurant. Yeah, Ooh. little guy. And it goes, well, hello there, Mary. And it will recognize your name because, of course, Facebook can pull that in. Um, welcome to our restaurant demo. I'm Bart, the butler chatbot here to show you how we can help you get more customers and increase revenue and local exposure. Hopefully that sounds good. So there's Bart. Um, click yes to start. Oops, that's several of these. But you can see that you can make it quite chatty, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to, if you need to leave, just but want to come back, go ahead. I'll wait. Um, if you ever want to end this demo, just type stop, and we'll stop messaging you. People need a way out, um, and and that's there all the time. Oh, excellent. Okay, so you hit yes to start. And it comes up, and of course, I've set up a demo here. Oh, go back. Which allows people to see what their restaurant might look like um, in here. So there's what's called a gallery, and you can share. So there's the restaurant itself. There's a chef. There's oh, another look at a kitchen. There's another look at a kitchen. And, um, you know, so you can use this to show people whatever you'd like about your business or about where you are or, 
you know, I mean, if you're traveling, Judith, and want to be able to share, this would be great. You can just, you know, put up images and share with people and talk to them about what's going on. Um, you know, by showing the pictures of your restaurant, the food prep team, um, about what you're doing. And then, you know, let's get them excited. I mean, you know, why would they want to come to your restaurant? Well, look at some of these wonderful dishes. Right. You know? um, and then it, and then you can also ask uh, questions about whatever pictures we're seeing. That's correct? Yeah, you can add whatever you'd like in here, right? Um, you know, so it's just kind of whatever you want to do and however you want to set it up, depending on what you want the end result to be. Okay. And talking uh, about you asked a question. Uh, can it be used to bring people into a membership program? Absolutely. And one of the best things to do that with is actually the contest bot that we're going to give away because um, you will get a lot of excited people. People love to win something, right? Yes. So if you give away like a free membership, um, and this is what we're talking with some of the chambers to do, um, you know, and if you give away a free membership, we're actually um, suggesting that they do it with their membership and have them um, members involved and let a member get a free membership and anybody they introduce gets a couple of months free. So it's a win-win for everybody and the chamber gets all kinds of referrals. So you can not only use it to grow your membership, but you have the opportunity to use referrals and everything else. And as you can see, you know, you can put in images, you can put in videos, I mean, here's um, a little video that I added talking about Gary B. Because, of course, one of the things that we want restaurant owners to understand is the importance of that first time visitor. You know, restaurants are rightly very, very proud of their food and they don't necessarily want to give it away. Um, but if you want to get a visitor in the first time, you're going to have to give them some reason to come in. And you're going to have to give them some reason to come back. And that builds loyalty. But people don't usually dine alone. So, you know, you have to kind of look at the return on investment. Um, and people don't know how they can even how they can even do that, you know. Um, but we have a Google document that we attach to all of our uh, messenger bots that will allow you to track who comes in, what's their name, what's their phone number, um, how did they hear mm. about you, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So you can put in and gather a lot of information. Then you about can them. Them. Good. Excellent. You know, Excellent. and like I say, this is very flexible. You can put in little videos, you can put in pictures, you can put in um, you know, clips, you can put in anything that you want to show people that would help them understand what's the value? What, why would I want to do this? Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at it and thinking, okay, uh, how can I use this to grow the podcast audience? Well, I mean, you know, get the people or, um, you know, I'll help you. For example, I'll give people a chat bot. Um, you know, we're already talking about that. I mean, you know, so anybody that joins the podcast goes into um, a box and every week we choose one to get a free chat bot. That's a fabulous idea. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> the thing is that, that there are a lot of different ways to use these right but you get people in generally we use um contests and we use events a lot i work a lot with the restaurant industry and of course events are also really good because you get facebook involved they love events they love sharing it yeah. and so, um expand your audience out even well beyond the um advertising audience just because everybody that's local 
is um, brought in with the event. You know, people go through and scan their events tab to see, oh, what's going on today? What's what's working well? Right. And, uh, you know, a friend of mine um, here it, near Vancouver um, has uh, a restaurant business. And I was talking to him about events. And he went and took it out into the local community and um, had a Chinese restaurant that needed some <laughs> customer. So they decided they would give away a bubble tea. And, uh, you know, bubble teas, to me, aren't the most amazing thing in the world. But a lot of people have that sounds like a Chinese offer. I'm no offense, but... <laughs> But, but, bubble tea. What are we talking here? Two bucks? I, I, I don't get it. That's not really a draw, is it? <laughs> oh, it was a huge draw. No, 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 no. Oh, contrary. Okay. People had not had a bubble tea. So free bubble tea? Are you kidding? About 3,000 people came into the restaurant in one day. And the... Um, well, you just never know. <laughs> and the cake on, the, on that, their normal Monday usually was five hundred dollars they did fourteen hundred and forty dollars worth of business that day all over bubble tea all over bubble tea well knock my socks off <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you, sort of you, our, it sort of knocked our socks off too because we were like really no <laughs> oh how interesting well it just goes to show you you know sometimes you you don't you, if you don't understand the market, you know, then you miss opportunity. So well done. So that was the restaurant then or the place that uh, kind of insisted that's what they wanted to do? Yeah, that was what the restaurant wanted to do. And, you know, so as you can see, this bot goes on to talk about, you know. Oh, just a minute. Bot. Hang on. <laughs> there we go. Back to the bot. the magic words to get people to want to take action is to offer them something free, but put a time limit on it because of course you want them to take action now, right? So, I mean, you've just heard how a free bubble tea, which, you know, must have cost them 10 cents each um, <laughs> to give away, um, brought in all kinds of new people who hadn't been in before, had never had bubble tea, and decided that they take advantage of and order food from the restaurant. So the restaurant tripled its usual daily take, introduced all kinds of new people to the business. And so, I mean, this is the power of our messenger chatbots. They can do great things. I mean, you know, you click show me, it takes you to another conversation. Give me the coupon, right? right. Um, and I mean, so, what do we, you know, oh, you can get a free meal and a free drink. Okay. So, you know, what do I get? Okay. Yeah. Show me. Right. And it's immediate. It's not something that you have to wait for and you've got it on your um, phone, but you are also, as you see, collecting information while you go. Is this the right uh, email address? Right. And is this the right phone number? Well, that's a cell phone that I use when I am computer. You know, but there you go. Dinner for two. Buy one, get one free. Plus, claim your free drink. Redeem this coupon. And, you know, so we have a whole process of going through to redeem the coupon. And if you come up and you want to redeem it, and, you know, invariably this happens, okay? People are curious. They hit that redeem button. All right. But, you know, the thing is that they don't necessarily want to redeem. They're, they were just curious. Yeah, they're checking so, it out. You know, so what we add is just making sure you really want to redeem. If you do want to redeem, show this to the team member taking care of you. They'll be happy to help and make sure your bill is accurate. Also, you want to claim that free drink. I mean, you've got a free drink with this. Um, and once redeemed, you will not be able to enjoy this offer again. If you click redeem by mistake, just tap on not now. If you want to redeem, just <clears throat> talk to our talk to our team. So, you know, 
it's right? Not. You have a choice, right? And these are called buttons and you can go to both buttons if you want to see what happens. And you know, if you click not now, I'm, there's just a nice little conversation that says, Oh no, not to worry. Just let the team member know. And if, and when you do want to redeem, so That's not a problem. Yes. So it all comes down to then advertising to get, people to the bot and then the bot does fantastic things that's kind well, of well it's not necessarily advertising because you can do it locally you can put you know we have people who um with table tents in their restaurant so right. all you have to do is scan it and um then you get added to get the free offer or to um you know join a contest or whatever it is that they've got going on this right. is really just a way to be able to especially for restaurant owners they don't have any idea how they can get people to come back on a regular basis or how to communicate with them so right. we give them um access through messenger chatbot to get lots of information about their people and to have ways to um invite them back and bring them back and and let them carry on and it goes without saying, they don't have the time to be able to have staff to be able to deal with uh, all the responses that they would get from a check-in table topper or whatever the case may be. So this is the, the best way to handle it. Absolutely. Well, I mean, the thing is that they, um, they may have the resources, but they don't have a way. What is great and what we're trying to do for them is to give them a way to actually have access to people who've been in and are starting to build up an interest in the business because those are the people that will give you referrals. Those are the people that will give you good reviews. And that is um, what we we want to be able to, to offer. And I see Christopher Knight is asking, is scanning still effective? Um, and I guess if you're talking about QR code scanning, yeah, QR code scanning is very effective. We also use mobile wallet because um, if you don't use mobile wallet, your coupon, of course, you have to kind of keep it in messenger, right? And there's a risk that you're going to erase it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, then of course your coupon's gone. Well, you always come back with source and ask for another one probably um, because they can check to see if you've redeemed it. There's a condition that we put on that says you can't redeem it again, or maybe you want people to redeem it again. You know, it depends on what you want, but um, there's always ways that we can have this be effective for whoever wants it. And, you know, there's just a million ways that you can use the messenger chatbots. So it's completely tailorable. And, and, uh, and that's, I think, well, one of the biggest things to remember that maybe what we saw today wasn't, you know, so it wasn't specific to what I want to use, but it's, uh, or anyone, anyone else in particular who has something else in mind, but it's all um, customizable. Oh, and absolutely. I mean, it's just a, a who, uh, of images, or it could be a gallery of videos. It could be, um, you know, whatever you want it to be. And it takes having a good relationship with someone like you to design the messenger bot in such a way that it's going to give you the biggest effect. And yeah, you want to, um, you know, you want to put some personality into it, you know, like for a restaurant, I got a Butler bot, right? right. I mean, it's just a cute little picture, but you know, it sort of is fun and it's not gonna, you know, and it tells people this isn't a real person, you know, this is just, this is just a little, um, you know, conversation we're having. But what's interesting, Judith, and I found this fascinating, is that all the studies that they do and all the um, examinations that they do, people would sooner have a conversation through a messenger bot mm -hmm. than they would with a real person, like on the phone. Why is that? I think because they there's certain sort of the anonymity you know like they they can still kind of be be private but have have their questions answered and stuff and as you know if you walk into restaurants anywhere 
people are sitting attached to their phone, right? Looking down, doing this thing. Yeah. And um, we have been, and even I, <laughs> which is quite interesting, will use Messenger, you know, to contact my kids and contact friends. And, you know, it's just easier because I can put out a message to them when it's convenient for me. And they can read it when it's convenient for them. That's right. Um, Chris has a question. What do you think is a fair price to pay someone to do a bot? What's the going rate for a bot? <laughs> well, that really depends on what you want that bot to do, right? I mean, obviously, some are much more complicated than others. Yeah, I mean, chat bots can be, you know, five, six thousand dollars. They can also be a hundred dollars. You know, it depends on what you want the the chat bot to do. Uh, we missed some of that. I missed some of that. I don't know. I'm assuming that that didn't come through. Could you repeat that, please? Because sure. uh, we had a little bit of a glitch there. Okay, no problem. Um, I just said that the price depends on what you want that chatbot to do and how much you want that chatbot to do. You know, we can do contests. We can do um, customer service. We can do reservations. We can do referrals. We can do... Um, reviews we can do all kinds of things but obviously it takes time to get the whole thing right and making it very very friendly so right. it's it's really based on how much time is involved right and then we have is it within in the realm though of the possibility of the the smaller restaurant owner let's say uh, I mean are they looking at a budget of uh, uh, you know, ten thousand to do one, or is it, are we looking at uh, maybe one to three thousand or something? Oh I no, really for, it's all dependent. For, for, a local, is it, for a local restaurant, I mean, we can get people started easily for a thousand dollars, not a problem at all, and have a very good, extensive um, bot put up right. up there because they don't necessarily want it to do all their customer service and stuff. And once they're used to it, and once they've seen what it can do, you know, for for them, it's usually about growing, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to get more people in, trying to grow um, their audience, trying to grow their revenue, and also trying to grow their stature, their presence in their local community. And, you know, by using contests, and um, events that is a huge huge boost for that kind of thing so but they don't have to be very expensive i mean you know uh, i'm going to give away um you know a bot to somebody and i've set up a, a contest bot well what did it take me it took me about you know 35 minutes yesterday um to go and do that and hook it into um, a page so that we are collecting the entries and so that we can tell who did what and when and, and how and um, all those kind of things. So, you know, it, it depends. <laughs> Depend and and I knew it would be a broad range. I guess what I would uh, you did answer uh, gave me a good answer for, you know, is is it within the realm of the average business person? Yes, it is. It, Absolutely. If you cut out small, uh, uh, maybe growing the business and st start. Here we go again. And uh, once you see what it does and it increases your, I have no doubt you're going to want more. This is just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> well, and, you know, just um, imagine if you had a law office, for example, and you've got all these potential um, types of clients coming in, right? Or one of the things that we do um, a fair amount of is um, for uh, we qualify clients for real estate people, right? Because they get so many rookie loans, right? And so we can go through, have the chat bot, ask nice little questions, find out where are they looking, what are they looking, what's right. their price range, when do they want to move, are they selling their home, do they have mortgages, all of these questions that the um, real estate agent would have to ask and at the end of the day after wasting you know half an hour three quarters of an hour of their time they discover the person isn't really a client at all right they don't right. know why they whatever but so why not let the, the chatbot take care of them right they'll be well taken care of mm -hmm. you know you can give them a copy 
coupon to go get a cup of coffee to thank them for their time if you want you know set up something right. with a local restaurant or something so that you make it friendly you make it a good um, experience for everybody involved and then everybody's happy right excellent so mary can you tell us a little bit to just here at the end um you you have so graciously uh donated a messenger chat bot um to one of our viewers so can you tell us a bit about that your promotion <laughs> absolutely so um you know i am happy to give away a chat bot and um, it won't be the most extensive chatbot that we have. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> I'm not going to spend 14 hours on it. But, um, you know, we'll have a conversation and I'll help you figure out what would be a good basic chatbot to help you get started, no matter what your business. You know, there's something that we can do and do fairly easily and reasonably that will help you have a conversation with your potential customers. and. Um, you can then have the experience and see, oh, I'd love more of this or, yeah, that's enough, <laughs> you know, whatever. Excellent. Well, Mary, thank you so much for joining us today and all the information that you've shared with us. And um, I would love to chat with you another time about travels again. We two two good travelers here. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. And I think I can. I'll have to visit you with regard to chatbot. I think that's uh, that's in my future. And go so, see Iwazu Falls in Argentina. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you haven't seen Falls yes. in seen Iwazu Falls. <laughs> ah, but did you tango? <laughs> oh yes, and of course we can go to tango. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Thank, thank you very you much, much, Mary. And um, so the link is going to be in the chamber area, um, right? You're going to put up a post with the link to it. Yes. And people can enter the contest. And as I said, I've got a Google Doc hooked to it. So I'll know who's entered. And uh, we'll pick a winner just randomly next week. And uh, I'll tell you and you can announce it next week. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay. And everybody, okay, so we look forward to seeing who the lucky winner is. You've got a week to, uh, they can watch the replay and still enter. That's right, isn't it? That's right. Excellent. Sure. Okay, thank you very much, Mary. You're very welcome. Take care. Bye-bye. Talk to you soon. Okay, so what I, uh, amazing information, always amazing information that we can get from, from some of these very talented people who are members of the chamber and uh, members, of, not of the chamber, of our group of, uh, of influencers for the chamber. Now, um, it's a great eye opener. Thank you. Thank you. That's really, really nice. Thanks guys. Um, do uh, come back next week. We're going to have Drew Griffin on. And uh, that uh, also promises to be very interesting. We'll also be giving away the winner of the Messenger chat box next week. So I'll leave you now. We've been an hour and it's been an, a very powerful hour. Uh, back to the backyard, maybe off to the beach. Enjoy your day. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>